guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori, and we're gonna do a little floss tube today. And on my channel, Floss Tube is where I talk about all the crafty stuff I've been dealing or doing or buying or creating and that I wanna share with you. It's mostly about sewing lately and cross stitch, but always subject to change. I'm having coffee. And my spirits are a little down currently with the state of our country. I'm not going to get into it, but just please, please know. I'm a little fragile right now. Waking up and seeing what's happening to our country is a little disturbing. So that's all I'm going to say um, on that subject. But that I definitely stand with my fellow women, people of color. I am open. I love and... I think this is a tragedy and I just, I need to say that. And I'm sorry if that's not how you feel and that's okay. Um, that's all I will say on the matter, but let's get started with my current whips or works in progress. Okay. In my ever tote bag with the black cats, I am storing my Nevermore. Now I have put this away for now and I'll show you what I'm working on currently, but I'm working on this Nevermore and I'm about halfway. I don't know if I showed it the last time, so I figure I better show it to you where I'm at. So this is the stopping point. I have completed the bottom half and it could be a little more than half, but at least the bottom half, two pages are complete. So i I'm trying to see it where I can show you. I filled in the raven. We've done the wording down here, this motif and all of these. Now this will continue up on the next page or two. So that motif itself is not complete, but for these pages it is. Um, I did um, substitute this color and where this color is called for again, I'm going to substitute it again. But this is, these are all over dyed floss. And most of it is what it's called for. There were just some substitutions. The big one was slug bug. Um, I couldn't find it. Oh, it's raining. Who knew? Um, I couldn't find it. So slug bug is definitely, that was this color here which I think is more of a brown, but I really like to throw in that teal in there, but I got some over dyed flosses that I'm gonna use the next time for another motif like this. And I also need to pick up some brown because I think I'm missing something, but. So that's where we're at. This is done on a 32 count. I don't even know what it's called. It's like a, it's a gray. And when this is done, I will have a little extra fabric to do who knows what with. But currently I'm putting this away. I am gonna partake in Jolly July. So Jolly, oh, here's what I'm gonna be using. These are from, I'll show you the floss I'm gonna be using when I get up to this motif right here. I am gonna be substituting in from Sylvia, she sent me some silks for you, and I'm going to try it. I've never tried silk before. So we're going to try some silk floss. It's so soft. So I'm just keeping it currently in the zip bag that it came in. And yeah, I'm excited, but I want to switch over and I'll show you what I'm currently going to be working on. I really have been working on something else, but this is in my rotation. I say rotation like I'm fancy. Guys, I have two big projects going. That is the extent of my whips and then some littles, but three big projects. So here is my um, Nevermore by Lila Studio. I am still working on my temperature ch book chart bookcase this is july up to la or june up to last week i need to fill in this week's colors which i'll do after i need a thumbnail i will fill in the, this week's june i also need to work on my um, bookshelf so that i can get july in and this is um for 2022 
So this is cur the current year. You can go back and do a temperature chart. Um, you just have to go back to websites and find the highs, lows, or whatever temperature you use for that day, wherever you're at. I know um, Stitchy Mommy is doing 2002, which is kind of cool because then you can pick your colors a little better. You'll know what the future date, you know, what the future temperatures are. But that's been really fun to do on a weekly basis. I was doing it nightly, but I found that I'm enjoying working on it like on a Sunday afternoon with a cup of coffee, which I will do while I'm editing this video. Okay, now the next, my work, current work in progress is the Kringles. And I will show you where I'm at. I am working in this room right here. Do you see the gold sparkle? So fun. So I'm currently working these three bottom rooms. I'm doing the store entrance and then I will go into each room. So I'm doing this for Jolly July. And I don't have the chart with me currently i have to go find it to show it to you the next time but i'm hoping to get this room done this week and a good uh start on these guys because i really would like to have a, you know i would love to have it done by the end of the year but i'm not sure if that's gonna happen but we're gonna work on this in july so this is um a big a big project it's gonna be rather large there are nine rooms and then I need to put the name of the store right there. So yeah, I'm working on that. And this is all the called for colors. I bought, now I did dye the fabric myself, which is like a, a modeled, I bought um, a piece of fabric, it's 32 count. And I dyed it with some pearl gray just to make it look like cement. So yeah, I'm working on that. Not really a lot of progress, but that's okay, because you'll see where my progress has been lying. Now, in my Platinum Jubilee bag in June, I've been working on these. Can I just show you these one more time? Because I love them. It's a little, and these are really like ceramic or glass and wear teapot and little teacups. And then my crown charm. So this is holds all of my Jubilee stitches. And I am currently stitching the single soldier right there. I was gonna do the three and I'll show you what happened, but I'm definitely currently working on the single soldier. And I did make a few changes, which I will show you. Um, but also on this page, you'll see, let me find it in here. It's sort of a finish, but it's not a fully finish. I'm pulling out all my, all my charts that are for the Jubilee finishes and I'll tell you in a second who they are and what they are. Oh, here we go. I finished this little corgi pillow here. It's just not fully finished. Um, but this is Royal Corgi Pin Cushion Ornament by Helen Phillips on her Etsy page. She has a bunch of these little Jubilee pin cushions that you can stitch up and I will show you them all that I'm working on or have finished. So first we'll show you the work in progress and I keep them all in here. And then when I move on to a different uh, stitch from one of my British or UK designers, I think I'll keep them in this bag. Um, this bag I made myself and it's got cat fur all over it because it's my life. So here's the Corgi complete. And I pretty much stayed within the, I stayed on with the Corgi in the same color family. They're not the exact color called for colors as I just subbed in some sulkies. I've been doing these all in sulky thread um, because I want to utilize it. And then here's where I am with the soldier. I did change the color of his belt to gold and the letter 20, the number 2022 I did in gold. And I might have to rip out that and do it again. My O, oh, my zero is a little short. And this is like a key fob, but I think I'm just gonna make a pin cushion out of it. And then the soldier will stand in here. There's a fair amount of, on the soldier, a fair amount of half stitches. On the corgi, just the nose is a half stitch. You'll see the black, it's kind of to a point. Those are just little half stitches. 
Ooh, it's raining out there. Um, in the soldier, there's a fair amount of half stitches. And I think I'm just making it up as I go. I never really looked up how to do it. So I've just decided up the way I'm doing it is fine. So there's that. So that is all of my uh, current, I think. I'm looking through my little basket of goodness, goodness over here. But I'm pretty sure... Yes, that is all of my um, current whips. So I don't have a lot of projects going at one time for sure. But I can show you a couple finishes. I have, this one is also from the Helen Phillips. Look at this tiny, tiny little pin cushion. And I got some... Um, yarn that mimics mohair and I just finished the edge with that and it's just stuffed and it's um uh commemorative of the platinum jubilee and I used some of the British fabric that I had to back it and all of these will be backed in the same fabric and they're all stitched on the same fabric which is 22 count um hardanger and I used these were coffee dyed, this fabric that I did. And it, this fabric here, I took some Dollar Tree teal and colored it with teal and then I didn't like it because it was too bright. So then I went over it with some pearl gray and I'm kind of smitten. It definitely is blue gray and I love it. Sorry, I digress. I finished this pin cushion this thing took up some floss and it was a lot of stitching and I just tacked on some of this red braid. I put a little 2022 and on the back again, I used the crown fabric. This is stuffed with walnut shells. So there's definitely um, some weight to this, which I like. And I have a tray here and it's a small wooden tray that I got at the Target spot. But what I'm going to do, if I can show you, I'm going to stand my queen up in it and then I'm going to put all of my pillows just kind of in here and do a little queen display, which I will show you on a vlog or something when it's done. But right now, I definitely am gonna put my queen stitch and then all of these Jubilee um, stitches that I'm going to do and I have two more coming. So that was my finishes for stitching. Now I will show you a sewing finish. I know. Um, I will show you when I bought in my new acquisitions and things that I purchased, but I went to a quilting store in a town called Coshocton and that's where I was actually born. And I went to the Main Street and there was this wonderful quilting store called the Mercantile on Main. And it's a fabulous little store. If you're in the area, I would say go in and, and uh, take a look. But I made a little quilt for the cat bed. So it's just a tiny little quilt. I bought this pack. It's a, called a charm pack. And it is a pack of five by five squares. And they're all from the same line of fabric. And this fabric line was called Flower Pot. And I was obsessed. This was the cover fabric and I knew I had to have it. So I just, I'm practicing. So I sewed them all together. And then I just did quarter inch border to quilt it. And you may be able to see a little better on the back. And I used, I went to Joanne. So these are all, and I actually was able to make two of these. This is one, two, three, four, five, 25 of the, of the squares. And then I made one with 20 of the squares, but the cat's laying in that bed. So if I can get a, bit, a picture, I'll put it at the end of his beds and where these will be living. But I made these for the cats. So I had all this fabric. Then I went to Joanne and I just got this Quilter's Pride or something in tea dye for the back. And then I got this like mustardy yellow to do the binding and it's all machine stitched. So this is me, I'm just practicing. I'm really trying to get better with my straight line stitching and I hasten to say I'm a quilter because I'm not, but I do enjoy sewing. 
So we have that. And then that brings us into some new acquisitions. A friend of mine at work at my part-time job brought me this. She had an extra. And this is the Prairie Schoolers Santas. And this is 19... 84, 85, 86, and 87, I believe. Let me see. No. Lies. I think it's 84 is here. Okay. So that is 84. This is 1985. This one here is 1986. And that is 1987. And that's also 1984. And this was from 1988. She purchased it for $3 at Rapunzel's in Frankenmuth, Michigan. So she brought this to me last night so that I can have it and I can stitch some of the older... Um, Prairie Schoolers. So I have one stitched already, but I am going to stitch that. At my stitching night starting Thursday, I couldn't find a stitching group in my area. And so I decided to um, create my own. So Thursday night's our first official night where we're going to get together and stitch. And I think I'm going to bring a Prairie Schooler to work on because it's in a fabric that I can see. It's a little bigger. It's not, I think it's 16 count Ada that I stitched these on. So yeah, I'll have that for Thursday night. And it's something I can just bring a little light with me. And then also last night at work, a co-worker brought me this sweater. And it's a cashmere sweater. And he was trying his darndest to sew off the little balls and ended up putting a couple holes in it by mistake. And so he brought it to me and asked me if there was something I can do with it. And there is. So I'm going to use this sweater, which is, oh, like I said, 100% cashmere. I mean, it is just wonderful. And I'm going to make, I think, some Christmas ornaments out of it um, so I can take this apart because it's ruined at this point, and I can make, mm, smells good, I can make um, some ornaments out of here. I gotta learn how to care for it. Since it's 100% cashmere, dry clean, low moisture, so we'll have to see. But I love this color, this mustardy yellow color, and I think it'll look perfect to make some Christmas ornaments. So I've got this, which also was gifted to me last night to do some crafting with. I'm telling you, I'm just loving, I'm just loving crafting these days. I also receive, which I don't have here to show you. Um, so I have a newer sewing machine, a newer singer. I got it a couple years ago, like five or six years ago. And it just, it's not working great. So my sister-in-law had an older singer, like the hardcore older singer that has all the metal parts and she gave it to me. So I'm hoping that'll work out better. So I have that as well. And then I received in the mail from Janet, I had um, offered to send out these charms, these 2022. I had to buy them by 100, and there's no way I'm finishing 100 things in 2022. So I mailed out like five and six different people, and look what she sent me back as a thank you. I love it. Look at that flamingo. This is adorable. So I need to hang this up in my office on my cork board. My office is gonna get a makeover no time soon, but my long-term goal is to empty out all the crap that's up there and get it painted and reorganized. And I would love a cork board wall to display different things. And this will definitely make it on my cork board wall. And Sylvia also sent me the floss from the same stitching group that I belong to, but I wanted to share my stitchy kindness because I think it's fantastic. Um, I'm pretty sure I showed you this floss last time, but just in case. So I belong to Leo and Roxy floss of the month. And I'm pretty sure I showed you this in my last video, but I don't remember what month this is for. This is June. So I don't think I did show this to you. This is June 
This is the floss that came in June. And this one is called Green and Barret. And look at the saturation. This one is called Mulberry, which I, I love a jewel tone. I'm not gonna lie. And you'll see in a minute. This one is called Mother of Pearl, and it's like a, a soft pink. And this one is Strawberry Shortcake. But look at those tones, just the, all the different tones in there. And this one is called Almond, which is a nice ecru off-white. So these are one, two, three, five colors. I think it's $25 US, and I get five skeins of floss every month. This is the Neutrals Club, so these are all considered a neutral. Um, I may switch it up in a couple months and get the more modern colors, which is your brighter colors. But for right now, I'm loving the Neutrals. And it's right in my wheelhouse. And Louisa packages it up, and we love her. So I received that for my June. And then I ordered from Leo and Roxy some more floss. Now, I love the Leo and Roxy floss. And I always have the links below in these videos. So if you want to get your hands on some of this. Um, the prices are in Canadian, and that's okay because it just comes down a little bit. But these are called one-of-a-kind floss. So these are happy little accidents, as Bob Ross would say. But these are, they're called um, licorice all sorts. And they are just this black and purple and deep color. Oh, I love them. So because they're one of a kind, they won't most likely be ever be recreated. So they're eight yard skeins. So I grabbed three because I think these would be perfect in like a sampler or on a, you know, like a monochromatic piece. So I grabbed three of those so that I would have enough to do some type of monochromatic piece. I mean, it's just beautiful floss. It's just beautiful. And then I decided I needed, if I was going to order, I needed some fall colors. So I would like to start some fall stitching after I do Jolly July. So I picked up, this is Colonel Mustard. This is such a pretty gold. It's showing up a little brighter than it is. This is Medallion. And again, a little brighter yellow. This is Haystack. Uh, this is Butter Chicken. Look at how orange that is. That is like everything for fall. This is Anne. And it's like a brownish cinnamon color. Uh, this is Turmeric, which is a yellowy green. And then I grabbed Verd is the Word. And it's a lovely yellowy green. So these are the fall colors that I have picked so far to use in some of my fall stitching. I have other colors as well, and I can, of course, always go buy more, but I thought this was a good selection of fall colors to have to pop in any of my charts. So I have that. So this was all the floss that I purchased this month. I don't think I'll need any more for a while, but who knows? I've been going through my floss at a fairly regular clip. Um, okay, I will show you what I bought at the fabric store. I got this bundle of fat cord or um, charm pack of, I think it was 46 squares, was $10. And I was able to get a couple of these little quilts out of it. But the reason I went is for French General fabric. So I love this French General. And this is the new line that's out. I'm gonna, I'm calling this my fall collection. But look at that, is that just beautiful. I definitely am gonna make a bag out of this and then I don't know what. And this one will go with this piece here. So the two of them together will make a bag. And I probably will do that across the bottom and that across the top or vice versa or diagonal, who knows. But I got these two to go together and then I grabbed this one. Oh, I am obsessed. Look at that fabric. Look at it with that blue. I really, and I have this color blue that I might use with this. 
I love it. And then this one has this fabric as the accent to go with it. Now, these are half yards. So um, I will get a bag and then something out of these. So that will go together as well. Um, so with these, I can get one bag each and then I can sew together maybe a small quilt or a little blanket. I don't know. I don't know. My new thing is if I buy the fabric, I need to use it and I'm stop hoarding fabric. So these were my latest acquisition of fabrics and I already used the whole charm pack. That I think there was one, one square left and that is it. Um, oh, some more gifted items. My friend gifted me this, which is, this is a tea towel for the queen's 80th birthday. She went to an estate sale and a woman there had collected from all over the world and she grabbed this for me, which is a beautiful tea towel. It'll probably sit out with my queen stuff for a little bit. I don't know if I'm gonna do something with it or not, but I absolutely love it. I wish they would have put it on like a plain fabric and not this weave, waffle weave, but whatever. And then she brought me this tea towel which is all of London. And I have a very similar one for Scotland. And I don't know if I, I don't think I have a London one, but I definitely have a Scotland one. And I think when I go to Ireland, I'll get one. And then I'm going to make something with the three of them, even if it's just like a wall hanging or something. But she picked this up also from the woman that collected all of that stuff. Um, I was at... Hobby Lobby and they had trim 50% off. So I grabbed some of this trim here, which is just your tape measure, which is accurate by the way. I mean, that is an inch. So I grabbed that. It was, um, you get, it was a dollar 50 and you get 15 feet of it. So that's a lot. And then I grabbed this, which was $2 trim and you get six feet but look at it it's going to be used on a halloween project to edge them and that middle is velvet or a velour and then you have your lace on the outside and i will stitch it right down the center and put it on like a pillow a halloween pillows or something just to display so i grabbed those and i think i also grabbed on clearance this yarn it was like a dollar for this yarn and I have a ton of that so we have that I picked up a kit so here's the thing I am doing the summer camp online through the Colorado Stitcher and in July or June was a holiday stitch. July, which you have to start and finish it in that month, is something that'll be framed different than a frame. Some type of finish, you're gonna stitch something that you would frame differently. And I think I'm gonna make a, um, a Christmas and it's gonna become a drum. And that's gonna be my stitch for July. And then my August, assignment is to try something new and so I picked up a Mill Hill kit and if you're not familiar these kits and I'm gonna take it apart and show you they are this kit Mill Hill is a lot about the beading but it comes with all the floss that I will need for this and it also comes with all the beads so in Mill Hill kits you use a lot of beading for it. So these are all the beads and then some. It also comes with the needle and this has a little bell. Um, it comes with the directions and then it comes, and I've never stitched on this before, is perforated paper. So I will stitch this little bee gnome on this paper and then trim around it for the shape. And then he has a little bell that hangs from the top of his hat there. So I've never done a kit like this. And then it has the chart, which I won't show you, but I'm going to open this up and see. It has the, the chart and then it has all these directions. 
and all the different colors of floss, where they're used on this little chart, how to do your beading, which is great because I've never really done beads. Um, special instructions, general beading, it kind of has it all in here. And this little kit I think was like $14, so not, not terrible, honestly, for a kit that literally comes with everything you're gonna need. And I know they have different kits. This is just one that I found. And I wanted to try something small, but I know they have larger, larger stitches for that. But, so I have, the, I'm putting it all back together because I don't want to lose anything before the month comes and I need to start it. But I will um, get all this floss set up on, I prefer to work from floss drops. And then I'll just put on there what the, what the kit was. But I got that entire kit. And I actually ordered on eBay because it came with, no. Yes, I ordered it on eBay because with shipping, it was less expensive than ordering it on like Etsy or from any other shop. So I got it on eBay. So I did that. And then I printed off some freebie charts that I wanted to share with you. This one, I got it, it's from Just Cross Stitching and it was on Pinterest. And I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure how it gets on there, but that's the pattern. It's gonna be for my Halloween stitching. It's just a little black owl, but it was on Pinterest as a free, a free chart. And it's gonna be 55 inches wide, 55 inches high. And it's done on a 28 count, two over two or 14 count Ada. This is from 2018. So probably why it's out there. And then I found a bird in the hand. It doesn't say who it's the designer. Oh, Blackbird Designs, I got this from their website and it's a bird in the hand. And I thought that was super fun. So I printed that. This um, Gobble Gobble. I can't remember what website this is from, but it's another free chart. And this is what I want to do with all those yellow colors is the turkey. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Oh, Alex took over the bed. And then there is Brenda Gervais. I think this is who this is. No, Jeanette Douglas. So Jeanette Douglas's website, she is releasing every month a different small bouquet of flowers and they're up to June. So they're current. And then she also was print sent out like a border that you can use, but I think I'm going to finish these all as small little bouquets for like pin cushions and gift them to people. So I just went in on her website. They're right on the main page, scroll down and you can print them each month and we'll see what the July ones that comes out in July. But those were just some freebie charts that I found. Um, most designers, so if you like somebody's aesthetic, you have a designer and you like what they, okay, can you get off there please? You like what they, um, their aesthetic. Most of designers have some freebie charts that you can test out the style and see if you like it. And I wholly re recommend that, as well as their usual littles, so you can stitch them up pretty quickly. Now the last thing I have, I ordered this from Everything Cross Stitch. And I ordered the whole kit. And it was like, oh, I can tell you how much it was. $31 for the whole kit. And it is Little House Needleworks. Um, it's from 2005. And it is uh, American Sampling. It's just this little tiny chart and I loved it. I love the simplicity of it. And I was enjoying stitching Americana there for a minute, but this is 2005 and it calls for 28 count cashew linen. So I got the piece of the linen that it calls for. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna do it one over one, but we'll see. And then it came with the flosses, minus one. They were out of stock on the marshmallow, which I think is just an off-white. So that's fine. I can use one of the ones I just got from Leo and Roxy. 
Um, but this one came with these classic Colorworks colors. I mean, just look at that palette. Like, isn't that everything? I love it. So it was Bunny Honey, um, Desert Mesquite, which is this really fun green, Tartan Plaid. I love that blue. That's a very French plaid to me. Uh, Manor Red and Old Oak Tree. And then it called for Toasted Marshmallow. Yes, Toasted Marshmallow, which was out of stock. So I'll go to my local Stitchy store and see if I can get the Toasted Marshmallow. But I love this palette and look how it's gonna look on this fabric. So pretty. Um, I probably will put this away for now. Um, I'm just not really vibing with the patriotic stitching right this moment, so it's fine. I have plenty to keep me busy, but I will put this together in a bag because it is all but the toasted marshmallow. It is a complete set, a kit, so it's ready to go as soon as I'm ready to start it. So I have a red, white, and blue bag. I will stick it in that. So that goes upstairs. I have a lot of stuff to go upstairs, guys. So that is everything that I have been currently working on. And I need to put this floss away. I like to keep my over dyed flosses in bags, floss away bags, so they stay without all the dust and stuff. So I will get all this upstairs get everything put away and then tonight I will work on my temperature chart because I need to get that up to date this week. So I hope you enjoy and I will talk with you guys later. Bye. Well I was going to show you Wellington sleeping on their new quilt but it's Alex now. This is their little window. Hi Alex. And this is their little quilt. This is the other one that I made. It's just a little different style. But I like it because I can wash this. You know, like once a week, I'll take it out and put it in the washer and get the dirt fur off. And it just keeps things fresh. Right, Alex? Hi, baby. Alrighty, guys. Have a good one.